the world in review the whole story world in review news without the humanistic bias world in review analyzing and reporting world in review education and information world in review from a biblical perspective the world in review with your host wally wood the world in review The Revelation File Report is part of the Revelation File News Service. It's a joint production of Wally Wood Ministries, a Houston-based, tax-exempt, nonprofit educational ministry in Houston. In these reports, we share information, articles, videos, and other materials that might be copyrighted. We give adequate recognition to all sources of the materials that we use. Our purpose is not financial profit but to give education and information on matters deemed important to our audiences at no cost to them. Free will offerings are welcomed, and we are exercising our copyright and fair use doctrine in these presentations. Hello, everyone. I'm Wally Wood. I thank you for watching, and thank you for joining us today. In the news, this is in March of 2022 that we are taping this, and as we all know, the big news has been Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. And there's been a lot of headlines and news and videos, film, everything that have brought us into the midst of this skirmish and this, uh, this war, this Russian-made war. And uh, I thought, you know, we, we've been getting a lot of feedback and questions from our listeners and audiences as to what this means prophetically. So I thought what we, we'd do today is take a look at this matter, uh, and we're calling it Madman Politics, because going into the days ahead, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at uh, prophetically. And we're going to be addressing that particular issue in today's program. And this is part one of what we believe to be a part two, uh, or two-part uh, presentation. The second part of this presentation will be on the work being done in creating a digital dollar for the United States. Uh, President Biden just issued an executive order recently uh, ordering the federal government to look deeply into this matter of creating a digital dollar for the citizens of the United States. Our third report will be on micro flyers, flying microchips. And it's been said that they are so small, you'll never know that they're there. So that's in our upcoming report. But today we're going to focus uh, predominantly on madman politics. I want to bring your attention to uh, a program that we've done <clears throat> in the past, uh, program number 80, episode 80, back in May of 2021. And it was reinstated in our more recent Allocated Lifestyles report, number 164. And we invite you to go back and take a look at these two programs. Our world has changed forever <clears throat> was the name of, of that particular episode. And in here, we quoted from Jamie Metzl, a technology and healthcare futurist, a comment he made in March 2020 when he said, the old world is dying and the new world struggles to be born. Now is the time of monsters. We're never going back to normal. In explaining what a time of monsters means, he went further to say, our democracies are going to be challenged. There are actors whose desires and aspirations are very different from our own, and this could be a moment of opportunity for them. The world is not going to snap back to being exactly like it was before this crisis happened. We're going to come out of this into a different world, end of quote. And in light of the news uh, in which Russia made its invasion into the Ukraine on February 24th of this year, 2022, it looks like that this particular part of uh, Mr. Metzl's expectations is coming to pass, a time of monsters. We're not going to be looking deeply into the reasons behind this or any of the other issues that are part of this particular crisis. We're going to look mostly at the prophetic implications of this because as we go into 
the world news from a biblical perspective, we're reminded of the invasion of Gog and Magog into Israel as prophesied in Ezekiel 38 and 39. In verse 2 of the Scriptures we read, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out. Now, before we go any further, let me have you take focus on something here. I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws and lead you out. This is by the hand of the Lord. And we need to keep that in mind as we not only read the prophecies, but see the events that will come forth in these latter days. It's part of God's prophetic word. In verse 8 of Ezekiel 38, After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel. You will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. So he's speaking in terms of this particular invasion in the future, coming into the land of Israel, covering the land like a cloud with many troops involved. Verse 13, Sheba, Dedan, the merchants of Tar Tarshish, and all their young lions will say to you, Have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods? to take great plunder. So get the scenario. The nations will be saying to this invader, why have you come into the land? What is your purpose? Verse 14, Thus says the Lord God, On that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, a great company and a mighty army. In the news even now concerning Ukraine, the question is being asked, can the UN do more than just talk about the Russia-Ukraine crisis? And again, we point your attention to verse 13, where the nations will talk against the invader but not come to Israel's aid. U.S. News and World Report. Can the U.N. do more than just talk about Russia and Ukraine crisis? So what we're seeing now in this attack against Ukraine, the nations are talking, but they're not coming to the assistance of the Ukraine. And here we have a prophetic insight into how this is but a precursor to the big attack that's yet to come. Verse 16, You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. Verse 23, Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Now let's just pause there for a second and take another look at this. We do not see any evidence in Scripture that suggests that any of the nations are going to come to the aid of Israel. And yet God prophesies here and promises that He is going to be hallowed even in Gog itself. The nations will know Him. 
Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself. <clears throat> and when you read the rest of the prophecy, you learn how God will destroy the invading army from the far north. And I think that we've established both theologically and eschatologically, <laughs> sorry, we've established prophetically that this invading country is going to be Russia and her allies. This will include Turkey, Iran, Sudan, Libya, out of the far north. Here we have a list of those nations of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Gog is the leader. It may be the surname of the leader himself, but it's the leader of the pack. Magog, Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. It's Russia and its bordering nations. When you do a deep study into this, you find that Rosh is the root word of Russia, Meshach for Moscow, Tubal for Tubalsk. Persia is in the list as present-day Iran. Ethiopia, Arabia, Muslim, or Muslim nations, meaning Somalia, Ethiopia, Yemen, Saudi United Arab Emirates, the African countries, Libya includes both Libya and Algeria. Gomer is Tur Turkey. The House of Togoma, 14 Muslim countries which split from Russia originally. <clears throat> countries with mountainous border being Syria, Lebanon, and northern Jordan. Ezekiel 38, 13, Sheba, Dedan, and Tarshish being England shall give a faint protest. Her young lions are the nations that are part of the British Empire. That includes America. All those nations of Ezekiel 38, 13 are the ones who come against the invaders verbally, but not militarily. And you read in that story uh, how fire and brimstone, earthquake, will be used in this war against Israel and how these things will be used against the invading army, I should clarify. So by whatever means God is going to use, He will have His glory. And it's never been shown in the past that uh, He got the glory when other nations were used to bring victory, not even World War II. The, all the glory went to the, the uh, nations that rescued the nations out from under Hitler. So God's going to use some methods here that are going to bring Him high recognition and acknowledgement and glory among the nations as He comes to Israel's aid. And I remember the Six-Day War, 1967, and how threatening that was to Israel's existence and how God came to Israel's defense visibly, sovereignly, and many, many Jews found themselves turning their, their attention to the Lord as a result of the Six-Day War. I interviewed a number of the Jews. I, I've interviewed Jewish leaders, consulate generals and the like, who were in that war. And they've told me stories, remarkable stories, of how the Lord delivered them from the hands of the invading armies at that time, the invading nations. So he's very, very able to do it again. And this is something that we, being attuned to the times, must keep in mind. That what we're seeing happening in the news right now, it's just a precursor, a lead, lead into the greater event that is yet to come, but it's not that far off. I think that it's a warm-up. And 
when you are from the other side of this issue, from the Russian side, the Muslim side, the, the thing that annoys them the most and taunts them the most is the existence of Israel. And so all this is being played together. And I believe that the Lord is wanting to get our attention, the church attention, the attention of the saints. Stay alert and be aware to the times that we're living in and what they really mean. There's a lot of scuttlebutt on uh, the internet and social media right now. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's trying to be heard and stake their place in the opinions of men. But I'm pointing us back to the fact that this is a major, major war that is going to take place, but it will be very short-lived, as is prophesied in Scripture. There's mention in there of how the, uh, the machinery, I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but the war machinery of the invading nation, Russia, will be destroyed and burned for seven years. And there are certain materials that the Russians use in their war materials, their war machines, their missiles, their planes, their tanks, that burns like coal and is as tough as steel and is somewhat secretive as to exactly what they use. But scholars have for a long, long time looked at the elements of the war machines of Russia in their search for the fulfillment of that particular part of this, of this prophecy to understand how it is that these materials will be burned for seven years at the end of that war. It'll take seven years to bury the dead. So this is uh, yet to occur and it's something that we should be alert to as we see what's going on right now in the news between Russia and, and the Ukraine. I'm not going to put forth any prognostications on the outcome of this particular conflict. I'm just saying use this as a looking glass into the prophesied end of days war and invasion. Look at the similarities between what's happened now and what's being prophesied to occur at the next juncture. And that's what we're focusing in on. That's what I want to bring your attention to. This is an extremely eye-opening event that we shouldn't take lightly in light of these particular prophecies in Ezekiel 38 and 39. So, we've talked about the madman politics, and let me also say at this particular point, Whoever it is that's leading Russia against Israel will have to show himself to be a madman, an eccentric. To make that decision in light of the support that Israel has by the nations worldwide, it's going to take this type of mentality that has attacked Ukraine to make the decision to attack Israel. Notice again what the nations say to the invader when he makes his move into Israel. Why have you come into this land? What have you come to gain, to take away? And I believe that part of that is going to be out of the need that Russia will have coming out of the Ukraine conflict by way of sanctions and things of this nature to bolster its economy and to rebuild its image and its strength globally. Israel is on the cusp of becoming a major oil producer. It's been estimated by the Associated Press and Reuters and other news media that, Russia, that Israel may very well become the world's third largest exporter of oil once this particular mother load of oil has been tapped. And there are a number of companies that are drilling for oil now off the coast and on land in Israel. 
And I invite you to go back and look at some of our programs that we've done on that because the time is now. So Israel is going to show itself to be anything but a poor nation. And I believe that's why, again, as he said in Ezekiel 38, these people who are living in peace and safety, will you not know it? So this is going to be part of that temptation for Russia to make its move into the Holy Land. So all these things are part of the madman politics. And that's what I wanted to hone in on today. In our next upcoming report, we're going to be taking a look at the new digital dollar. This is, it doesn't exist yet, but this is a serious uh, conviction and commitment to develop and design a new digital dollar to leave fiat currency behind and have it replaced by a cryptocurrency. And we will take a closer look at President Biden's executive order that he issued this March and is gone into effect. Central bank digital currency is of great interest to nations right now. There are over a hundred nations that whose central banks are looking into developing cryptocurrency as a replacement for their own paper currency and coins. And they are committing themselves to this new direction. It will take the anonymity away from the world of cryptocurrency and put it into central control, just as you have with printed currency now. And so we're going to take a closer look at that. And then there's this other little item, micro flyers, flying microchips. So small, you'll never know they're there. Again, we did a report last year or so into our total transparency and how there's no place to hide. And in that report, we revealed to you smart dust and how smart dust has already been uh, developed and matured to become a very viable uh, part of warfare. Smart dust was used to find Saddam Hussein in his hiding hole in Iran, uh, Iraq, I mean. And uh, other terrorists have been found by way of smart dust on their persons. Well, these micro flyers go one step even further than smart dust. But all these particles have communication capabilities. They're able to communicate with one another and to transmit that communication to a central control. So I think that you'll find this to be equally challenging and interesting. And the reason we bring this to our attention is because the Antichrist is going to declare himself to be God. Now for him to do that, convincingly, he's got to prove it. And he will have the best of global technology at his disposal to pull it off. And these particular elements, micro-flying chips and smart dust, are part of that technology by which he will be able to know each individual on earth. You know, the Bible says in Revelation 13, 15, that the image of the beast will cause those who do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Now, how's that going to happen in a world of 7.5 billion people? How's he going to know who's worshiping him and who's not? Smart dust, flying microchips are part of that equation. And so again, for the sake of our new audience who've never heard these things before, prepare yourself. Tighten your seatbelt because we've truly become a totally transparent world. So we are in the throes of the fullness of latter-day end-time Bible prophecy and fulfillment. And my assignment from the Lord has long been bring these finer elements to the attention of the body 
so they can use it evangelistically as well. You've heard me say this before, the more you know, the less you fear. And Jesus said it, stay on the alert. Stay aware of what's going on. I thank you for viewing our program today. I pray that you are receiving some good information here and that uh, you are being uh, blessed and benefited by it. And again, I invite you to invite your friends, your pastors, others with you to view these programs. We'll come back again uh, later on with the continuation of the Revelation File News updates. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forms in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valadez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvaladez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time and be sure to like and share this channel.